I'm old school. I, I've always liked personal training. I, I come from agency background that we've always spent a lot of money on training and trainers and it's always been live. And obviously COVID has stopped that for us. And also as a small agency, I, I, I can't do live. I used to work for a really big agency and we could bring in trainers from internationally like Mike. And we now are nine people and my budget also maybe doesn't allow me to fly in Mike from America. And I think this platform gives us access to someone like Mike who's on the opposite side of the world but faces the same challenges that we do on a day-to-day -day basis and we get access to world-class training which we normally wouldn't get um, maybe through a blog post or something like that but not on, in this one-on-one -on -one, one -on -one, um, format so I think We were a small team and there were nine of us on the Zoom call. And what really helped is that personal connection to everyone. So how we started off was that everyone introduced themselves and just gave a little bit of story around them. And um, so that first of all connected everyone into the session. And what Mike did really well is that he had made some kind of notes on the side to, about the stories and then came back to those later in the session so that everyone kind of felt connected again. He had listened to them, um, kind of knew their names and what the story was that was attached to it. So I think that worked really well. And what kept the energy going then is the, the asking of questions of individuals. So I think really to say, say Claudette, you were the one who was in accounting and what do you see on this graph? Um, so that again, it connected the people back into the session versus where I think some virtual sessions can be very much about a presentation and you're just listening to it where this was just connecting everyone back in. And that I think is key in a virtual training session or a virtual speaker to have that connection although you are at this point we the opposite end of the world so so i think that really was the key for me that connection to the individual um and then bringing them back into the conversation because it's hard it's hard to concentrate for an hour an hour and a half on a virtual session um, and we really kept the energy up um, and I think that's probably another thing is that high level of en energy. Although Mike's not an energetic, rah, rah, all the time speaker, and where I come off as bouncing off walls, but I think that that energy level that's always kind of there and bringing people back in, that's, that's another thing that I think Mike does really well. Interesting. I hadn't briefed them on what the training was going to be. I just said, we're going to have a training with Mike. He's one of my favorite trainers. And um, they, I think we're expecting a PowerPoint slide and some hardcore, this is what you must do training. And Mike's training was very different to us. It was very much around stories. We had kind of mapped out the key things that we had wanted in, as an outcome, and they were flowed into these stories. Um, and what everyone said is that they had taken something else out of the the training session, but because we'd discussed what we, our ideal outcomes would be, everyone that had taken something else had taken something out that we had wanted to focus on, which I thought was really great. Um, so they were very positive. It was very upbeat afterwards. I think the big thing was connecting what Mike says is the head and the heart. And I think that was throughout the training and we could bring that back into the, into work again. So that was, we had, Well, first of all, he makes fun of himself sometimes, and <laughs> and I think my team loves the fact that he says y'all now and again, just for, just for them. Um, I think f fun is the the stories, um, kind of the personal stories as well. I, I think too often a trainer just thinks focuses on content and not on on weaving those stories. And I, I think how you make training fun and and real is is the stories um, and not taking yourself too seriously, which Mike never does. First time I met him, he stood on a chair in a training room, which his wife has told him never to do again. <laughs> if you're looking for a trainer who stands behind a PowerPoint slide or you see PowerPoint slides come through, that's not what you're going to get. Um, it's a very personalized approach that you get. Um, I'm, I'm, I know Mike and I sat out and we sat out and mapped what, what are the expectations for the training and what are the outcomes that we would like. Um, so if you're looking at someone who's not going to give you the cookie cutter kind of training that goes out to each one of his clients, if you're looking for that, that's not Mike. If you're looking for someone that'll personalize it for you, who listens to your stories, who listens to what your needs are, and then does that in a way that's not just telling, but also consultative to the team and pulling them in, that's, that's the kind of training you'll get, um, I think, from Mike. <laughs>